Welcome to the God Farm, your God Farm. This is Al. At the God Farm, you're going to learn the meaning of your life and your destiny with God for eternity. You're going to learn what's been stopping you from the true meaning of life and how to get past those areas onto your forever journey so you can be face to face with God. Jesus tells us we should build up our treasures in heaven. What, what exactly is that all about? What, what are these treasures in heaven that we're getting? How do we, how do we invest in this? What's the investment plan in this? From Matthew six nineteen to twenty one, Jesus says, "Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal." But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what, what treasures must, must I say, Je- Jesus is saying this is, a, is really a command for us, what must we build up in heaven? when everything there would will be provided for us. Um, we look at Revelation, and Jesus tells us that some of the treasures that we see there and that we're going that we have, uh, we get for being an overcomer or a conqueror. Jesus says, we're going to re- we have 18 rewards. And I'm going to go. And I'm going to list all these rewards because I think they're fantastic rewards. Many people uh, aren't even aware of these rewards, and these are the rewards that you'll get for um, for being that that you have for being an overcomer and a conqueror by accepting Jesus as your Savior. All right. Number one, it says in Revelation two. Uh, verse 7 I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God number 2 is in Revelation 2 all these are in uh, Revelation 2 and Revelation 3 this is Revelation 2 verse 10 it says I will give I will give you a crown of life number 3 Revelation 2 11 you, sh- you will not be hurt by the second death, which is the lake of fire. Number four, it says in uh, four, five, and six, there's three of them. Verse uh, 17, I give you to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give you a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receives it. In uh, number 7, 8, and 9 is in Revelation 2, verse 26 to 29. I give power over the nations, and you shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star if we look at uh, oh quite a few here in Revelation 3 verse 12 10 11 well let's let's go with Revelation 2 5 for 10 11 and 12 it says the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And we see in 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, will I make a pillar in it, the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, out, go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is a new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. 
And number 18, uh, Revelation 3, verse 21, I grant this person to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. So I said to God, Jesus says to be to be an overcomer and a conqueror, you will receive these 18 uh, different rewards. The teachings that we're going through in the God Farm are teaching you how to be an overcomer and how to be a conqueror. It's, uh, it's more than uh, salvation. You want to be uh, working with God in your destiny to overcome and to conquer as he has he has a plan and a strategy for everybody's life so this is what you want to be doing once you're um, operational in the spiritual realm and working with uh, you're, you have that uh, you have that uh relationship personal personal relationship with Father Jesus and Holy Spirit now you want to be uh, now working with him to overcome and to conquer what he has uh, set uh, what, what plan he has set before you that he wants you to operate in your destiny while you're while you're still here um Now, some people say, well, to overcome and to conquer is, is making it through life. Uh, try not to sin as much as possible. Uh, you know, follow God's standards as much as possible. These sorts of things. And the, this is all, uh, this is all uh, a great, uh, a great uh, way of leading your life. But more to it than that, and even some say, well, maybe I should be evangelizing as many people as possible, which is, uh, you know, fair enough plan. God has you, has you doing that in whatever way he has uh, mapped out for you. But uh, is, there, is, there a, is there a different strategy or a biblical strategy? And we look at Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus said, Therefore, go, which is a command, and make disciples of all nations. So we notice that he says, make disciples, which is what he did. He taught people how to become leaders and carry on after he was gone. So that each of these disciples should produce more disciples and so on. This is how these disciples created a greater return on their investment rather than just evangelizing uh, people or just teaching people how to work in the spiritual realms. And really, I'm amazed at how few leaders and few Christians actually follow this command from God. We really shouldn't want to leave this planet until we have produced at least 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, and, I'm, and when I say disciples, I mean leaders, teachers, who are going to be going out, and you've equipped them, you've mentored them, to not just operate in the spiritual realm, but to go out and be leaders themselves in whatever way God has, doesn't, doesn't mean they have to follow exactly the way you are doing things. Everybody has their own style, Everybody has their own, their own uh, way of doing things, um, and, and God has his own plan for each person, for sure. I mean, Jesus uh, had his way. Uh, we look at the different disciples they all had. They all came from uh, different different backgrounds. They, they had different ways of approaching things and looking at things and handling things. They were bold in Christ. Yes, they stepped out and traveled, traveled uh, to many places and did what they, what God had them do. 
same as us, each person, God may have you, uh, you know, going out and preaching. Someone else, he may have have you going out and uh, doing something, maybe in, in prison, prison ministry or something, and guiding guiding those people into operating in the spiritual realm. Who knows? You have to work with God and find out what what leadership uh, um, plan or uh, that He has for for you. And this is how you'll develop your your investment plan in heaven, um, because I you know long after I'm gone. I want my investment, I want my harvest, my God farm to keep going, to keep growing, to keep to keep producing fruit, to keep uh, producing out there. Uh, just like Daniel Nash, he died 200 years ago. I learned from him. Many others I'm sure have learned from what he was doing as well and have applied it into their lives and became aware of it. Same thing. I want my. I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in others. I'm investing in in, in teaching leaders and mentoring and equipping people, and I want to see them expand, develop their lives. Go. I would love to see them all to go way, way, way beyond me, and do way, way more than I've I've ever done or will ever do. That would be awesome and fantastic. They operate with God working under his will, developing their God farms with him. Fantastic. Huge, huge investments out there for everybody. If if people would do this and follow God's command to be developing disciples, which is what we're supposed to be doing. And this is going to uh, reap uh, great rewards for you and for others and for God's kingdom. Don't let anything hold you back from developing your investments and your treasures in heaven now. God bless. If you'd like to learn more about these God-inspired teachings, please go to thegodfarm.com and you can partner with us as we become co-creators together with God.